One of the things that's important to know how to do is a pivot table and pivot charts. So I wanted to quickly show you an example of one. In here, you will see that you have data. And so I'm going to create a pivot chart from this data by just make sure that you are on the data somewhere. And then you're going to go to Insert, Pivot Table, which is on the left-hand side. And we're going to put it onto a new worksheet. And you'll see by default it goes, puts me into the new worksheet, gives me the columns, which would allow me to create a pivot table. So to create the pivot table now, I can just drag the um, particular column down and rows to create it. So if you would go ahead and you can drag down, we're going to drag down the branch. We'll put that on the rows. And then in our column, we're going to put the account type. And then we're going to put the amount under values. And you'll notice it defaulted this time to count of amounts. By default, it tries to do certain things with the values based on what it sees in the data itself. But always go back and look because it's very easy if you just look at a glance to think that it's done what you want it to do. But remember, Excel may not interpret it in the way that we want to. So it's a very easy mistake to make. So always go back and look and make sure that you actually wanted to count up the amounts that are in there. So this is a count of CDs, a count of checking, a count of IRAs for Central, North uh, County, and Westside. All right, so it counts up the amounts. The way to kind of know that is go back and look at the data and say, here's these dollar amounts in here, and it's counting up how many for each one. So that's fine. We'll use that. Okay, so that would tell us there is 97 uh, CDs at Central Bank. All right, now, with that, we have a pivot table now. And so once you have a pivot table, you can make a pivot table chart. Make sure you are on the pivot table. If you click off, you'll notice that your uh, dialog box goes away. Okay, and I want to create the pivot chart. So in my pivot chart tools, I can go up here and I will see under analysis a pivot chart option. And then I can pick what kind of chart I want to make. Here is the chart to go with the pivot table. All right, I could do some formatting if I want because now I'm in the pivot table chart tools. Okay, so you'll see I have some different options up here. Okay, and one of the things that I had mentioned was that you would need to do a slicer. Slicer is a newer feature. Uh, started in 2010. I'm in 2013 with um, this particular example. And I want to insert a slicer, which is under analysis in the pivot table charts, right? So this is a pivot chart. And I want to insert the slicer. I clicked on it. I can pick what I want to slice by. Slices are nothing but filters. So if I wanted to filter by, let's say, the uh, branch, I can check the box. And I can do more than one if I like. So I could also, let's say, open by the, um, I'm going to filter by the branch and also by the account type. That gave me two of these slicers, and they're just a really kind of nice, fancy way to be able to filter. So I could go here, and now I see everything, but I could also just see CDs, checking, IRAs, okay, I can see by one particular one, or I can take it off the filter by clicking and putting things back. So that is an example of a slicer. This is a pivot table. Here's your pivot table chart right here. And one last thing I wanted to show you in this example would be 
how to group the data. Because right now, if I try to take and create a pivot table, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about as I talk. So if I go back to the data, and I'm going to create a new pivot table. And I'm going to put this in a new worksheet. And let's say this time I want to do the, uh, let's see, the account type in the columns. And let's say that I want to do the date. I'm going to do the date in the uh, rows. And you'll notice because of the type of data it is, it lists them individually. And it's very difficult for me to look at things, you'll see here, um, because they're only by days. You can do what's called grouping the data. And so if I wanted to group the data, what I would do then is I could go on to the data anywhere I wanted on here. This is one way. There's a number of ways to do this. I'm going to do a right click, and you will see the option to group. And this would allow me to do it by months, quarters, years. Now, you only do this one time in a spreadsheet, just one time. So since you're going to do it once, you just can go ahead and select. I would select them all, whether you're using them or not in this particular moment, because what's going to happen, it will make these available to you. Okay, so I'm going to do months. I'm also going to include, um, I don't have, I don't want to do necessarily hours. I mean, you could do them all. It wouldn't hurt anything. But I am going to do days. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice what happened here now is that I also have these options for months, quarters, and years. Now, this data doesn't have um, a lot of different years and things like that to work with, but this is an example of being able to do it so that when you do have that kind of data, it would give you that option. All right, so you'll notice in here now, I, these weren't here before, they are now. I also still have the original that I have, and it automatically put them over here and made them available. I do not want to use all of them. For instance, I don't want to use quarters, so I'm going to take out quarters. I'm going to take out date. Um, and year, and I'm just going to leave for month. And so for the month of October, I can now look at uh, the account types, and I am going to count up the different um, account types. So I'm going to put that under value, and again, by default this time, it did count of, and it puts in here now for the month of October, I had 211 CDs. 278 checking, 28 IRAs, 195. So it counts those up, and I have month as an option. Watch, if I take month out, you will see that I, if I put went back and put my regular, original date in there, you see I have all these individual dates. I would not have had an option, although I could have gotten in the grand total here. Okay, but by having an option of month, I can have them all at once, right there. Let me scroll back up so you can see, and there. Now, this only had one month of data, but as you can see, if I had numerous years and 12 months, this becomes very, very useful to slice up the data when it's in this format. Much easier than going back and trying to manually manipulate the data, which could take um, a large amount of time. So use the group. I did a right click, and you'll see the option to group is available to you. Group one time, you'll have it available to you. Every time I go to make a pivot table now, I will have months, years, um, available, quarters available to me. I do not have to keep regrouping. You only have to do it one time, do them all, leave it, and then it becomes available to you. All right. After you have your analysis on different ones, make sure to name them, you know, analysis one, analysis two, analysis three. Okay. I'm, I'm going to show you some examples that I have already done here. Um, again, using the data, again, you've got pivot tables here created and charts. So some nice examples. 
these examples actually come from your book. And they're all used with the same data. So you can see with the one set of data, you have many, many ways that you can look at that data to answer all kinds of different questions. Using Slicer is one easy way to make it interactive. Okay, clicking on there will bring up the pivot tables again. And don't forget that if you lose your dialog box, it very well could be that it's just turned off. And again, if you go and look on your ribbon for those pivot table tools, you will see field list available to you, and that turns it on and off. So this was an example of how to create a pivot table, create a pivot table chart, group data on the dates in particular, and to look at Slicer.